Swayam Prabha. Digital India. Educated India. Morning. Welcome you all to this next class in this course on analytical, spectral, and microscopy applications of inorganic compounds and nanomaterials. Uh, just immediately previous class, I started this XPES or XPS photoelectron spectroscopy. Details I have given you the basics. I have also just given you one example. And now let us look at uh, more and more examples of organic, inorganic, other kinds of things. I draw your attention to this particular uh, slide uh, on this. So, I have already explained in the towards the end of the previous class is uh, three uh, molecules and then citric acid where the binding energies come. The greater the electronegative groups that are being attached, the higher the binding energy is. Sometimes you have to be very careful, you will see the x axis labeling is it written as kinetic energy or binding energy. If it is a kinetic energy, then you have to subtract from the common energy that is used to get the binding energy. So, the greater value here will be equal to smaller, the smaller value will be equal to greater because you are subtracting from that. Uh, so, the greater the electronegativity group attached or then it will be the binding energy will be higher. Suppose if the species tend to be positive, then again uh, energy will be higher binding energy and if the species tend to be negative, then it will have a lower. Okay? So, these are the things that let us keep looking at some more examples of this. So, we have an example of the polymer as shown here on this slide please, polymethyl methoxylate. So, if you look at the formula, it has only these are the ones, the carbon with this and, and these kind of things. But if you look at their wide spectrum, you will find not only carbon peak, nitrogen peak, oxygen peak, those are the ones, but you also see some sulfur peak because when they make this particular polymer, they must be using some sulfur based materials. So, therefore, you have that. So, that means even if you have a minute impurity in this at the surface, you will be getting that as well. So, the wide scan spectrum uh, is coming not only from the formula, from the surface, whatever is there on the surface. Now, how do we look at this? Uh, if you look at this spectrum, you get this broad. Uh, kindly look at the uh, uh, slide, please. This green one envelope is the one which is the measured spectrum. And these blue, the red, and the lighter blue, and the purple, these are all the deconvoluted spectra. So, you are basically depending upon the humps that you have, you deconvolute. You get a one peak here, you get another peak here, you get another because it's a kind of a shoulder and is another. So, one, two, three, four. And now, if you analyze this, this will be the lowest binding energy. This is a little higher binding energy, little higher binding energy. So, that means as you go from right to left in this particular spectrum, not all spectra, the right end is the lower binding energy that will be the carbons without much of the electronegative atoms being attached. So, in this, so the ones which are not being attached is this kind of thing CH or CC. So, that is what you will see. The next one is C with one O, single bond O kind of thing in this. Uh, COO CH3 in this one you have so you have COO uh, this kind. So, this is one with the single bond O, this is with one with the double bond O, and uh, so these kind of things that you can uh, see that. Uh, sorry, uh, so this is so this CH3 is connected to this, and this carbon is connected to this as well as this. So, obviously, this carbon will have a very much higher binding energy as compared to this and this one okay, uh, is further connected to C, CH3, etc. So, this will have much lower and this is connected with the CH, H kind of thing. So, this will have much lower kind of things. So, you can see that the one where you have completely lower and this kind of thing and this comes more or less overlapped that is where it is the blue 
you know, triangle or peak that is shown. The next one is the, uh, the pink or red peak which is shown for this particular kind of a thing. So, and the one next is shown, uh, this is some CO with some NH2 kind of a groups. There are some coming over here and the ester carbon and this is this carbon is coming at the higher. So, you can also see the ratio of these peaks, this to this to this to this. So, you can see and then you can work out the polymer at the surface. You cannot get the polymer molecular formula from this, but at the surface you have other things as well. So, that is where you are getting. So, which means that the binding energy lower is the one with one, one oxygen bound and the ones which is higher binding energy will have a double bonded one or more number of oxygens kind of thing. So, I guess that uh, is uh, clear. With that, maybe we will see some more examples of more polymers. And again, I draw your attention to the slide here, please. And you can see, and there are some carbons here, uh, these carbons, these carbons, and there are these carbons which are attached immediately to that, and this this carbon which is attached to both sides O, and and these carbons attached one side O and other side uh, the other. So like that, you have different types of carbons that you have. And these can be seen here, the, this, the carbon which is attached to the carbon that will have the lowest binding energy. So, here it is 284.6. The next one is attached to one oxygen 286 range. Then another carbon, next one is a carbon with two oxygens is around 288. So, 284, 286, 288 in that range that you get. So, you have uh, various so, you do not need to consider these ones, these ones coming from other uh, OJ process, etc. possibly. So, you do not need to get those. So, this is for the carbon 1 spectrum. In case if you look at the oxygen spectrum, so how many different types of oxygens are there? There is one oxygen here which is attached to two sides carbon, there is one oxygen here is connected by double bond to the carbon, that is it. So, there you get for the oxygen spectrum here is very simple, you get two so types the A and B. A is the blue type of a uh, fitting and the green fitting that you have B. So, the A is coming around, uh, this is the area wise 46, 54 you do not need to worry about it. So, A comes around close to around 531 or so and this will come to around 533. So, the two, two electron volts difference. So, this spectrum is carbon 1 spectrum, this spectrum is oxygen 1 spectrum like that you can get many number of things that you have. Now, look at another example here. Uh, which is a fluorinated carbon uh, polymer. So, instead of hydrogens, you have the fluorine CH are replaced by CF and all that. So, this is the, the polymer uh, group and you get uh, this is a spectrum of the carbon 1s and this is a spectrum of fluorine and this is spectrum of oxygen. So, you do not have oxygen here, but if you look at the oxygen spectrum initially, uh, when this polymer is not clean and used as it is before cleaning that A as is, whatever is synthesized as is, if you take, you get a spectrum from carbon, you get a spectrum from fluorine, you also get a spectrum from oxygen which you do not expect from the formula. So, that is because some surface oxygen deoxidized products are being present in that. Now, so the carbon spectrum, there are two types of there, uh, there is some CH and uh, some C with a double F. As such, if you look at the formula, only carbon with the, the two fluorines bound, only one peak should come. But there is some peak, that means at the when you synthesize, there is certain little amount of CH is still left unfluorinated, non fluorinated. So, non fluorinated uh, CH will come here, fluorinated will come there. Now, if you clean with methanol here, and see that CH part is going away and the oxo oxidized product is going away, but not completely a little bit is still left. And fluorine spectrum is as it is because fluorine is there in all. The next one is you clean the surface with the acetone. So, if you clean the surface with acetone more or less like this and uh, this gets oxo species is gets completely wiped off or if you uh, clean in heptane then again you will have the signal. So, the surface cleaning will tell you the species which is there earlier 
are lost or there again. So those kind of things. So, so the, all this you take a small layer of that, put into the vacuum and put it under the spectrometer and study. So, so sometimes you will find uh, the elements which you do not expect which are not there in the formula. You are not looking at the formula alone, you are looking at the surface. So, surface may have other kinds of things. So, this is nothing but tetrafluoro polytetrafluoroethylene. So, that is the polymer PTFE, PTFE that is which you use in many applications of that. Hope you got it. Now, I look at another example here. We have uh, the an inorganic lattice is called the hydroxide layer lattice. In that layer, between the layers, you put some organic molecule. So, in one case, you put this organic molecule, in the other case, you put this organic molecule. This organic molecule is not just a simple organic molecule, it is a salt, sodium salt of this carboxylate with the OH group. This is the sodium salt of sulfonate group with the OH group. So, the two things are very much related except for that this is carboxylic group and this is the sulfonate group. So, both are negatively charged, so the counter cation is sodium. So, now this compound is put into the layered structure of uh, this and uh, this is intercalated into that layer. So, whatever the small layer of the compound is coming into the layer, this is the layered thing it is in that. So, your analyte is coming into that as a layer that is what it is and this is your analyte and these are the layers of the uh, so, uh, whatever you have. This is the double hydroxide. So, in that, but you are not looking at the XPS of the of the lattice of the layer, but you are looking at your compound. What is your compound? In one case this one, in the other case this one. So, this carboxylated one and sulfonated one. Now, look at this. How many different types? This is a carbon spectrum. So, this is a carbon 1s is written in the top uh, corner carbon 1s. It is an intercalated one. What different kinds of carbons are there? There are these four carbons are one type, then this is attached to that, this is attached to this directly. So, this one may be very close to this or may, may get overlapped on the same, but this will be different because it is directly attached to the oxygen. Here, this is not directly attached to the oxygen, this is attached to the, the CO2, and this carbon is attached to two CO2s. Okay? So, you would get three to four peaks in sometimes 3 because of overlap of that. Now, if you look at the C, C peaks are coming over here and the C with the OH are coming here. In between there will be a little bit CO2 carboxylate is coming here. It, this you can forget about. The shake up process is nothing but the OG process which we are not looking at. So, though you expect 4, you are finding 3, but one more is buried under here. That is where it is. So, a little bit of this one. So, uh, at least you can see three of them. And if you look at the oxygen spectrum, there is uh, this oxygen here and this is this phenolic oxygen. So, you will get two types of oxygen. So, this is the carboxylate oxygen and this is the phenylate oxygen, the two. And carboxylate oxygens are two, phenylate oxygen is one. So, one is to two ratio if you look at this. And this is the OGA process, you can forget about that. How do one know from the energies? So, where it comes? You have seen there is only very shift, small shift, small range of chemical shifts. I hope you have been looking at the slide. I forgot to uh, draw, uh, tell you that to draw your attention in that. I am explaining the second example in this particular slide, the bottom example, where you have the SO3 group and this is a uh, S2P spectrum. You do not need to worry about looking at all that. 2P, S2P. There are how many uh, these things? So, uh, there are only one type of sulfur. So, one type of 2P3 by 2 and then one type of 2 uh, the sulfur with uh, the 2P half. So, that detail we do not need to go. So, we will just say the one type of uh, that that is already there. And if you look at the oxygen spectrum on this side here, there is one oxygen here phenolic, there is another oxygen with the sulfonate. So, you can see the oxygen coming from the sulfonate group, oxygen coming from the phenolic group and this is the OGA process you can ignore, you can find. Okay. So, only that in the case of sulfur, you got extra data, but you do not need to worry about it. They are not from the same sub level, this is from the P3 over 2, pre half. Okay. So, one does not need to worry about it. Now, you got the different types of carbon and different types of oxygen and all these things we have looked at. 
Let us look at uh, another example which is called the covalent triazine frameworks. I again draw your attention back to the slide. These are synthesized by taking this monomer and using the uh, catalyst. Here the example is shown zinc chloride. In the next slide I will show some more examples with the different kinds of chlorides or halides are used as a catalyst. So, when you use this catalyst and when you hit that 4 degree 400 degree Celsius, you get a polymer or framework, a triazine framework which is covalent triazine framework. These are not non-covalent, these are all covalent. So, or you can use this is a para diciano, this is ortho uh, with respect to pyridyl. So, 2, 6 uh, diciano-pyridine basically. This if you put with the zinc chloride catalyst in 400 degree, you get a different kind of thing. So, this is labeled as CTF10, this is labeled as CTF1. Now, so actually what happens is these CTFs, the kind of extent of, if you look at the extent of nitrogen, this will be different here and different here. Type of nitrogen, this is the pyridyl nitrogen, this is the triazine nitrogen, again pyridyl nitrogen, but here there is only triazine nitrogen. So, there is a different kind of a nitrogenous part and different amount of the things. So, all these are present and therefore, nitrogen 1s uh, XPS spectrum can, could help what kind of a groups, what kind of a species are formed. So, this means the, your temperature can be varied, your the catalyst can be varied, then the kind of a framework that you get triazine framework will differ. So, how do you know that? Use the modal compounds and you get the from modal compound you get this is the species and then you map this value binding binding energy value with your polymer or with your triazine framework. So, use the modal compounds and we can distinguish several types of nitrogen species. Okay. So, depending upon the type of the conditions that you have used the catalyst temperature and other things the concentrations also then your material properties will change and that is what you are. So, the co covalent triazine frameworks these are very porous they are of course organic the pore size not only pore size is dependent you can see the extent of carbon interior of the pore the extent of carbon here is different. So, there is a reasonable amount of hydrophobic and reasonable amount of nitrogen is present here mostly nitrogen is present inside. So, the na chemical nature of the pore and the pore size all these are uh, important for the kind of a studies you do. So, so what kind of a, a studies? You can do catalysis using these molecules, these uh, covalent triazine frameworks. You can also do because of the several different sizes, you can do when you have a mixture of uh, compounds depending upon their size, you can sieve them, you can separate them. So, you can use in separation, you can use in catalysis, variety of these things and the chemical nature that you have. Now, I draw again your attention to the slide please here and this uh, thing the left top spectrum the binding energy versus the intensity and from these small molecules it is identified this is pyridinic kind of nitrogen, this is pyridol type of nitrogen the structure is shown over there, structure is shown over there. This is quaternary kind of a whenever you have a plus kind of a symbol coming on that element obviously, your binding energy will be higher. So, quaternary kind of a thing and then some oxidized species the nitrogen. So, some surface will always get oxidized kind of thing that will give highest. So, if you remove uh, if you do not consider this you can see the 401, 400, 398. So, that is how it is. So, that is very sensitive to the kind of a nature of the nitrogen species that is present in this. Let us look at uh, whatever the, the chemistry part I mentioned to you. If you take this plus this with the different kind of a conditions, it can give this kind of a uh, structure, uh, this kind of thing, this all these are possible with that. So, you can use starting materials like 2, 6 and uh, the pyridinyl kind of thing or 4, 4 pi bipyridyl kind of bi uh, phenyl kind of thing with the nitrile. So, each one of these will give obviously different. Now, come on to the uh, top. Uh, the right extreme set of uh, spectra, they are all again a set of spectra of the nitrogen 1s XPS of that and what is that one? The all these are CTF 10 uh, which I gave here 
this kind of thing but synthesized using a different catalyst so here this is compound so and this is the compound with the breakup you have here so these breakups will tell you this is the decomposition of that and uh, n minus with coordinated and then pyridinic variety of kind of things now if you make the zinc salt as the catalyst if you make the copper salt as the catalyst if you make the tin cup as a salt the spectrum from outside looks same but if you look at this deconvoluted ones and look at the green versus yellow versus the purple ratio of the area area ratio you have to look at so here you see this uh, is somewhat a little different from this if you look at this this yellow one is more or less suppressed and this red one is a little bit more increased and if you go to the tin the yellow one is much more suppressed both the green and the blue uh, and the purple are coming almost in par with each other so that means your catalyst conditions so there is uh, the all are maintained at 500 degree celsius one with zinc chloride other with the copper chloride other with the tin chloride etc and the catalysis is done the trimerization and then you have a ratio difference in the framework molecule that is molecule that is being synthesized and the surface properties of that so is a catalyst dependent composition so composition different difference that nitrogen containing material versus the other now here you can see variety of these molecules if you look at this it will be here if you look at this it will be here nitrogen 1s if you look at this here if you look at the bonded one it is here if you look at the trizonyl kind of thing is here etc so these are used as a reference or a standard and then your polymer your dry trizone di framework is de deconvoluted into spectra and then assigned that's how the assignment is being basically done i hope that part is clear so i have explained to you simple molecules i explained to you some the polymers then i am explaining some reaction where it forms a uh, the trizene kind of a framework i explained to you catalyst uh, role in this so based on the catalyst then you have a difference in the ratio of these constituents that are formed in that here is another example again draw your attention to the slide this is done a reaction which is done uh, from monomers converted into polymers one is the monomer is ethylene glycol other is the pyrrole and in this the iodine i have dyed is used as the the catalyst in this and that forms the poly uh, eg polypyridyl kind of a polymers and then they form the mixture so if you and then together together it will form this kind of a molecule here you see this part of it here so now you can map this this is a carbon spectrum this is a nitrogen spectrum so deconvoluted totally to 1 2 3 4 5 6 peaks so you you see that from this side to this side what you have is the binding energy 283 up to 289 in that range okay and their areas are also good so 7% 35% 25% 20% 7% 3.55 etc you can get all of these so you can make so this is the polymer kind of a molecule that is molecule that is being formed by one particular kind of reactions conditions so what you do is you take the uh, the uh, ethylene glycol and uh, heat it to the 50 and take the vapors inside a reactor and similarly you bring the pyridine and iodine into that at room temperature and then mix them and allow them to react and in a reactor and whatever the conditions given here so that polymers copolymers formed peg ppy copolymers formed and that is what you are analyzing you take a you get you form a film so you, this you do in a tube in a vessel so therefore this product formed will be forming on the surface of the vessel then uh, if you want to take out that you wet it with some water or ethanol or acetone and try and uh, get it dry and get the thing if you don't get it you need to do recycling re, uh, several times of this wetting drying wetting drying then you will get the film and that film is being subjected to this particular spectral measurement and you can see this is the product which is formed from some other method so you have different kind of a carbon here another kind of a carbon here another kind of a carbon here all of these 
so which was giving into that. So, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 all these kind of things. The greater the oxygen binding, the greater the, the binding energy is that. Okay. So, C, C and C and O not C, C and C, C, uh, C double bond C with the C, C double bond C and then C, H, C oliphatic kind some, some kind of a oliphenic type, oliphenic with uh, oxygen far away from that, oliphenic with directly electronegative oliphenic type or carbon type with greater electronegative. The same molecule here, molecule is not different. Now, if you look at the nitrogens, so you find three breakup of this, this can be uh, n minus spectrum can be deconvoluted into three peaks. Uh, I hope you are looking at the nitrogen 1 spectrum shown on this particular slide as a peak 1, the peak 2 and the peak 3 and this is assigned to this kind of a nitrogen, this is assigned to both sides attached and this is assigned to this. So, these are the things and then you can get the ratio and from that you can tell how much of the pyridinylic type is there, pyrrolinic type is there, how much of the decomposed one is there, how much of the quaternized kind of thing, all these kinds of things can be identified for your the copolymers that are synthesized and that will decide your application at a later stage where you can use that. So, the analysis of a polymer, a copolymer that is synthesized uh, by using uh, food electron spectroscopy. Now, let me try to conclude uh, these uh, carbon based uh, kind of a thing, organic based ones with a carbon, with a nitrogen, uh, with a oxygen, these are the kinds of things that we have seen. What are the kinds of ranges? If you look at here, carbide with a negatively charged, its uh, binding energies will be the least. Highly positively charged binding energy will be the highest. Highly electronegatives will be a higher side. So, these are the things. So, simple carbide means C minus kind of carbon, cis neutral carbon, carbon with a nitrogen. So, you can see almost roughly if you look at, if you uh, you know the ignore some couple of peaks here you can see roughly like a linear kind of a relation that means increasing the binding energy because if you go from left to the right you are increasing in energy. So, if you look at uh, C with the nitrogen somewhere here, C with the oxygen obviously it is somewhere here, C with uh, again among these things alcohols, ethers, ketones, carboxylates is moving here you see within that because your electronegative atoms are moving. So, again, but with the 2 fluorines, with 3 fluorines. So, roughly you can say almost like that increase as the electronegative thing. This I took from another source, but it is ok, no problem. So, C with the H, C double bond, C kind of thing, C with the N, C with the O, etcetera, roughly you can see that. So, that is how the binding energies are changing. Now, if you know the surrounding of the, of the carbon, then you can predict where it will go higher side or lower side. Now, similarly nitrogen ones also. So, you have just one point. Uh, if you look at here, this is going from somewhere to 80 to around 294. So, about 10 to 15 electron volt range only, not large. So, it is uh, you have to be very cautious about that. So, and nitrogen similar kind of things you can look at. These are going from not so much of a thing, it is coming, coming from 396 or 397 to 407, around 5, 10 electron volts. And I am not going into the each one of these. If you look at the bottom line, I have explained here in the blue is imine is less than amine, is less than amide, less than imide, less than nitro because oxygen is bound, less than nitro oxy. So, more nitrate type, nitrite type, or nitroxide type, imide type, amide type, nitrogen. So, these are the nitrogens present in various kinds of things. So, obviously, go from left to right is increasing in the binding energy. You can also look at the sulfur, chlorine, they may not be that better uh, thing because their, their range is not too much. Because here you see 163 to 168, not so much of a range. Okay? So, if you go for a different kind of thing, sulfates, yes, they will come extreme because the sulfur has got two oxygens. Okay? Uh, the sulfur, this thiol, those kind of things will come lower side. And uh, sulfone, sulfur with uh, SF6, the sulfur with oxygen, sulfur dioxide, sulfur oxide, sulfur trioxide, they will come into higher side. Similarly, for chlorine, not so much of a difference, generally do not use the chlorine for that except for the two extremes. So, the extreme kind of thing, 
and the more positive with a high uh, the other one is low in between there is a gap. So, that is why you cannot so easily use the chlorine, but other things are good enough. Oxygen also the same thing the difference in this is not that much. So, uh, except in few cases you do not use in the organic compounds very easily the oxygen only to support whatever the structure you have you can look at the uh, look at the oxygen, but otherwise carbon and nitrogen will give you the full structural features what kind of species are there at the surface etcetera etcetera. So, all of these. So, these are some things in the past uh, previous class and now uh, uh, completed in terms of explaining the technique what we are going to look at this and is basically simple uh, you know uh, the looking at uh, carbon spectrum, nitrogen spectrum, oxygen spectrum, sulfur spectrum, the organic, inorganic I am going to explain in the next class. So, I will be taking one or two more classes on this to explain inorganic compounds, to explain some surface catalysis you do take uh, during the catalysis what happens. Sometimes catalytic rate goes on why is it going down? So, there must be something happening for the cat catalyst, something happening to the catalyst surface etcetera. So, all these we can address using the XPS spectra. Okay, so thank you very much.